every single time I walk through this area of my trophy lodge, I see this old legacy diamond kudu, and it just kind of bugs me. Everything else here is true racks. We've got the true racks diamond on the other side, but we still need one more to complete this wall. So we are indeed heading to Verhunga Savannah once again today, and maybe today is the day we finally get it. Now, of course, because kudu drink time is so late, we're not going to be hunting kudu for the entire duration of this video. We'll probably go and eventually chase lions and stuff, of course. Looking for a rare female lion is still a thing out here on Rahunga, but for now, this level 3 is a pretty good estimate, 128 to 140. I think we're just at the side of the neck, but well into a lung with the 308. And by the way, the reason that I grabbed the 308 is because we are in multiplayer today, and basically every time we try to do this, the time gets changed after we kill like one kudu, and we never really get to actually spend time going after him. So if that happens again, we'll go back into single player, and the 308 is just going to allow us to potentially shoot as many kudu as possible, and get the respawns should we need it, and of course, it's a good weapon, so why not bring it in general? But, at least we have one kudu, in fact it's a silver. I was pretty certain that was going to end up being a gold with that estimate, but silver level 3 to start with. Left lung, and we were indeed just to the side of the neck bone there. But, oh, I didn't even know. We've got host, so at least we know the time is not going to get changed. That's a little better, level 4, 136 to 148. A lot of the times when we do go out here and chase Kudu, it'll end up being... I don't know, I, I guess we are up to the northern part of the coast already, but... We end up going pretty far before we even find a decent one, so... That's pretty good news to see that always tough as well in these areas to see the actual range so it is about 300 meters i think we'll just try to take the bigger one there is a smaller male over there too that will do just fine we'll leave that guy go not that it really matters hunting pressure wise but it's just a small three and in all likelihood given what we saw earlier probably another silver i know i've talked about this before the harvest screen really does not capture how good these true horns are for the kudu like, the ivory tips on those are just fantastic, and then you get into here, you can kind of see them, but it's not nearly as visible. 138.8 for that guy, actually just outside of the max weight range, I thought he might have been uh, a 91 to 105, he was just under that 91 mark. Not too bad though, 265 meters, double lung, liver, and stomach, no wonder he dropped into his tracks, that's about as good as you can do other than a hard shot. I mean, that's progress, and technically... With that SML to 151, it could be a diamond level 4, but I'm not really going to hold out too much hope for that. And by the way, I made a bit of a mistake with this loadout. We have the 22 pistol, just to kind of change it up on the off chance that a level 3 rabbit would show up. And of course, it is effectively the same as the 22 LR when it comes to shooting near an animal and kind of alerting them. But the problem is, I didn't bring a scope. And I think I'm going to have a hard time gauging the bullet drop correctly to actually alert them. But, I mean, maybe that'll be enough. It actually worked. Got one running by here. That's not a bad one either. And I don't know why he just stopped there. I guess it's kind of due to the water. I forget if the inside spread affects the kudu score. They're all kind of stopping. At least those ones actually ran away. And I guess the closer one eventually ran off as well. I never heard him. But that'll... Oh, there he is. Blends in pretty good, but that'll be our biggest one so far. The overall spread does indeed matter. So that definitely helped him getting to 147.4. Not too bad, but I think we are going to go ahead and probably change the time to sometime during the day and do a little hunting with some actual daylight rather than night vision binoculars. If you saw yesterday's video, you may recall a brown bear that we shot, I don't know, 120 meters away or so, and I mentioned at the time, I've been a little more careful with stuff like that. And if there is an animal in the distance that probably isn't rare, but I'm not 100% certain, I just take the shot and go and find out. And in the case of that brown bear, I thought it was a blonde fur type, and it turned out to be an albino. So. In the case of that female lion, wherever it ended up, in fact, it is a little unfortunate because now we get to sit here and wait for it to float across the water. Because it was in the shadows, it's tough to say it could have been a dark brown. Seeing it there, I don't think it is. But honestly, we saw that brown bear in broad daylight and stuff, and I didn't notice it, so 
I kind of just want to keep on taking that approach. I want to say it's just the tan fur type seen it up close like this, and in fact it is. But, you know, and it, it goes back to the example from yesterday's video. It can happen where, whether it's lighting or, you know, just the, the distance or anything, that, that can make it maybe not as obvious that it's a rare. And it's those types of things. You know, you wouldn't mistake probably an albino lion for a common, but a dark brown or a blonde, if it's in the brush or in the shade a little bit, it can look common and... I mean, I just about passed over the brown, but there's a legitimate chance, I think, if I wasn't recording, that I wouldn't have shot it because I wouldn't have bothered to talk about that particular kind of tactic of just shoot stuff and make sure. And, uh, good chance that I walked right by an albino brown bear, one of the rarest things in the game. I like that with the population redistribution they did on Verhunga Savannah, that lions drink up here now. This is a lake where... It's actually undergone quite a few changes. It used to be what I would say was the best Cape Buffalo Lake. Now I'm not sure if they drink here at all, but there was a time kind of in between that and where we are now where lions drink here that you'd still kind of run into kudu, springbuck, warthog, and the occasional Cape Buffalo around. And now it's kind of got to this place where there are a number of lions here. And thus far, we haven't shot anything all that special. I really want to get a diamond one or, or a rare up here would be ideal. Just, I don't know, I like this area. It's been one of those spots that over all the years that Verhunga has existed, we've come here to look for different trophies and taken quite a few, including our first ever albino cave buffalo. I just like this area. I guess it maybe is due to the kind of memories and trophies attached to it, but I like that there's still a reason to come here because outside of Lions, I don't really visit this lake much but guaranteed golds are always nice 45.3 as a level 7 for that guy not too bad of course the harvest green's still all weird with the uh, mains for them but they look fine in the trophy lodge and while they're walking around still speaking of guaranteed goals as we're kind of moving through here although maybe less of a guarantee when it is a difficult shot but a level 7 jackal Kind of fired a little early there. That time we're going to get the drop shot, so that'll be enough to get the gold on him. And we're going to, from a lake that was one of my all-time favorites, to one that really only recently has become one really worth visiting, and it's down here. One of the best lion lakes suddenly. I would actually say this lake just south of there is the best. As you can see, someone else is hunting down there, so we're going to go and visit this spot. I remember shooting an albino springbuck there long ago. I didn't even know we hit him on that first shot. But uh, that's about the only thing we've ever killed of significance there. And now I, I would bet we're going to see four to six lions at this lake. And obviously that's a lot for lions. As expected, there are quite a few lions around this lake. Got a level seven maxwood estimate there. Another seven beside him. You know what's been interesting? And... Certain lakes in certain areas on different maps tend to kind of do this. Almost every time I've gone here, whether it is in single player or multiplayer, there is at least one max wood estimate lion, and it's only been sevens and eights thus far. I've not shot a level nine here, but it might be one of those spots that, you know, tends to produce bigger lions. And we'll kind of just have to see how that goes going forward. Got a fifth lion there, definitely not a rare. And as far as I can tell, the two females out there are also common for types, so I think we'll try to take that bigger level 7. Right at 300 meters, so it shouldn't be a difficult shot. And despite the fact that we're going to have to go for quite a run over there to go and get him, that looks like it'll be enough to bring him down, although not as quickly as we'd like. I can't see anything other than a lung shot, so I'm pretty sure we're good. No track needed, though. He apparently just stayed right there. 46.7, not bad for a level 7, and I think it mostly was because of our angle and the fact that a lot of animals don't lift their heads while drinking out. I think that was a bug that's hopefully going to be fixed in the future. You kind of have to shoot through a leg there, and that's preventing penetration into the far side lung. So, single lung is enough to get the job done, although had it been maybe a level 9 or something, I'd like to maybe take a more surefire shot. In the meantime, that other seven's there. I mean, if he's right there, we're kind of going that direction. Why not take the shot and bring him down? That one, because there's no leg in the way, is going to be double lung. So nice to get a little bonus kill. 45.9 for that guy. 
a little high. Got him in the vertebrae too. That's just going to help to bring him down more quickly, but works a little better, I guess, double lung at closer range. So we find ourselves now back to what we were doing at the beginning. Hunting Kudu in the dark and actually with two max weight ones in front of us this time, although I'm not sure we can get them both due to the fact that that one's facing away. It's got a higher estimate. Neither have any shot of being a diamond. So I think the move is going to be take that one and try, maybe, to get a neck shot on that. I'm not sure if we got a brain shot or a neck shot, but it did insta drop him, so at the very least we'll get to see what he would have scored. The first one's kind of uneven. 138, definitely one nice horn on his right side. The left one is lacking. And then the other, I thought we just ran by him, he's right there. I don't even know how that's max weight estimate. We did hit the skulls, so that kind of ruined the gold. That is the smallest max weight estimate Kudu I've seen thus far. He's barely gold anyway. But, uh, I guess technically shooting the one that we shot first was the right move. I would have thought that one was bigger, but it definitely was not. As we are getting ready to wrap up here, I thought we'd come to the one location where we have shot a diamond Kudu. It was actually in single player at this particular lake, and for some reason, we were able to spot, there we go. It almost seemed like when we turned the light off, we couldn't spot that level 4, but up here in the northeast, it's a spot where, you know, we, we've taken a lot of trophies, lions, gate buffalo, stuff like that, and our one and only diamond lesser Kudu, but unfortunately, no level 5s here in multiplayer. But I guess the good news is, compared to our normal hunts, specifically targeting Kudu in multiplayer, at least we actually got to shoot a couple during their drink time today. The other kind of positive side to it, we saw way more big Kudu, max weight estimate, you know, high scoring golds than we have really on any other Kudu hunt that we've got on since the addition of the Truax. I guess outside of the one where we shot a diamond. So hopefully that's going to kind of, you know, continue to grow as we keep looking for them. I just hope, you know, there's a couple of things. The albino grizzly bear has been one we've really been grinding for. I'd love to get another Diamond Truax Kudu out of the way before the release of Reventuli Coast, just so it's not something where we're trying to go back, you know, maybe before we otherwise would, and get out here in Berhunka and look for a Kudu. So hopefully we can get out of here a few more times in the near future, and maybe we can get that Kudu in one of those hunts. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.